hi my unicorns welcome to my youtube channel if you're new here hi but if you're there with my long time wagwan so today's story is about spirits mm -hmm. about ghosts or what some people call it dopey so today we're going to talk about a dopey story now when it comes down to ghosts it's a hit or miss some people are full believers and others aren't. No, while it's not scientifically confirmed that ghosts are indeed real, there's a large amount of evidence confirming and supporting the fact that they may exist. And some people even go to school and they will study these instances to help us understand what's really lurking in the dark. Now, as usual, we're going to just jump right into the story. We're not wasting no time. So this story takes place in Ellerslie, Georgia. Ellerslie, Georgia is a small town located in Ariston County in Georgia. Now, the main thing to do out there, go to church, go hunting, go fishing. It's simple. It's small. The population is just a little over 3,000 people. So it's like, you know, it's a small town where everyone seems to just know everyone. Or at least if they didn't know everyone, it's a familiar face. So... They're like, I mm, know they face them. I see their face there already, man. Mm, I see their face there already. I one of them situation there. No, there wasn't much to do around town. So a lot of people or young adults would just go down to Columbus, Georgia, because there was like a lot more activities to do and they had more fun down there. So the year is 1989. A young family, the Wyricks, they move into Ellerslie, Georgia. The family consisted of Andrew the father, Lisa the mommy, and they had a three-year-old daughter named Heidi. So they moved to this small town and they buy their first home as a new young family. The family moved out there so they could have a fresh start, but most of all, they just like the idea of moving to a small town, you know? It's a good, safe place to raise a family and just a good place to, like, start out in life. Well, so they thought, hmm. I think it's safe to say that most children have an imaginary friend. Some kids have them, some kids don't. A study showed that by the age of seven, 65% of kids actually have an imaginary friend. And a lot of the times it starts out as early as three years old, then going on to about 11. The Wyrick's daughter, Heidi, again, she was three years old. And since moving into the new home, Heidi had a new imaginary friend. Heidi's parents at first are thinking like maybe it's a way for Heidi to kind of cope with the move or she's just using her imagination, you know? Like her mother and father say, a picnic, she just a play with herself, she just a use her imagination. Mm, we're not worry about it. Lisa, Heidi's mommy, said that there would be times where Heidi was playing in the backyard and Lisa would be kind of watching, you know, like observing. And she would see that Heidi was talking to someone. Now, Lisa would later say that she found this weird because it wasn't just a little talk. No, it was long conversation. So, Lisa sit down and watch her daughter I talk to herself basically because Lisa never did a sin all so she just the idea sit down and talk to herself for hours upon top of hours upon top of hours like any parent who wouldn't be worried back to the story now Lisa would later ask Heidi one day hey who's your new friend who are you talking to so now she asked her daughter come here who are your new friend let me see a new friend uh, we had talked to so long introduce me now Introduce me to the person. Who I know him too. So Heidi turns to her mom and said, Mom, my new friend is this old man in a black suit and a top hat. No. Lisa was shocked. Because, you know, all right. Little penny of them imaginary friend. But, you know, one would think that imaginary friend would be around the same age as them. No. Mm -mm. Heidi imaginary friend is an old man wearing a black suit and a top hat. So Heidi mom is kind of asking more questions like, tell me more about this old man, what him look like, all of that. And Heidi said that this old man's name was Mr. Gordy and that they would play in her room and in the backyard. Heidi and her mom would take walks around the block, you know, like exercise a little, stretch them foot. And when Lisa would look over at Heidi, she would see Heidi holding what was what seemed to be an invisible Anne. So she would ask her daughter, like, honey, I must say this. She just said to her, Pitney, come here, come here, come stand up right in front of me. Over any hour lamp on. 
No, ufa anya walampan, really. Ufa anya walampan. And Adi would say she's holding Mr. Gordy's hand. Adi would say that she would meet her new friend out by the swing set and they would talk most of the days. And Mr. Gordy, whoever this person was, seemed to always be around. And Adi even told her mom that Mr. Gordy told her that there's money buried in the backyard. <laughs> no. If my opinion come to me and say, Mommy, my imaginary friend say there's money buried in the backyard. My not ask, may I go out there go dig it up? End the story. Back to the one year. So overall, Heidi was talking about this new friend and her parents, Lisa and Andy. They were paying attention as parents should. And both of them were kind of just letting it be. So I guess they're like... You know, a little pitney, make she play with herself. She just I imagine so she have an imaginary friend. She not cause no arm, this new friend not cause no arm. We're gonna let it be, we're not trouble it. Now, when Andy would be at work, Lisa would be at home with Heidi. And Lisa wanted to be supportive towards her daughter. So whenever she would make lunch for Heidi, she would always make an extra plate for Heidi's friend. And they would all sit and have lunch together. No, the food was always left untouched, but Lisa was just trying to be supportive towards her daughter. However, things changed when Heidi met a man named Con. One day while at home, you know, a regular day, mommy in the kitchen a cook, Heidi in the living room a play with her toys and her imaginary friend. The doorbell rings. Lisa is in the kitchen and Heidi goes to answer the front door. Standing there was a man with an injured hand and a blood-soaked t-shirt, and he called himself Con. So Addy goes to the kitchen and tells her mom, Hey mom, there's a man named Con at the door, and he's all bloody. Now for good reasons, this worries Lisa. So Lisa dash out of the kitchen, run go round at the front door for see where Pitney at all about. I mean, the two of them alone day home, her husband day at work, and her Pitney go tell her, say, there's a blood up man at the door. Mm -mm. She run go to go see where the baby at top bow. So Lisa goes running towards the door to see what she was talking about. But when she gets there, there was nobody at the door. So Lisa then calls up her husband Andy. And she's asking him to come home because she's worried that there was a man who may have been trying to lure Heidi out of the house or talk to Heidi. So you now she calls up her husband like, babe, 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 come home, come home. Heidi just tell me so I'm blood up man there at the front door. No, I don't know where I'm going. Look how much host in the place. Why I'm choose to come at our house? Why I'm blood up? Why I'm, why, 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 why? She just no not know what to say. She worried, she had panic. She just want him there at the house. I guess she's afraid. Well, she's afraid. So Lisa had a bad feeling overall and wanted help looking for this man in the area. I mean, he couldn't have traveled that far. So once Andy gets home from work, they go searching around the neighborhood for this bloodied injured man named Khan. And sadly, they just came up empty. There was no physical traces of this man and no one had seen him. So Lisa had a sister named Joyce. Lisa, Ida's mommy, had a sister named Joyce. And Joyce ended up moving into the home right next to Lisa and her family. Now, this was comforting to Lisa because, you know, to have her sister living next door and just have, like, family nearby is comforting. So Lisa is telling or just venting to Joyce about what was going on with Heidi. Her imaginary friend, Mr. Gordy, and the weird blooded man at the door. So, you know, her sister come and she says, Sister girl, mm, may I go through it? Everything I'm my bad. I did have a new imaginary friend. Him named Mr. Gardy. Then when they in the kitchen a cook, door ring, one bloody man. Well, I did tell myself one bloody man stand up at the door. I go out there, I don't see him. I don't know what to do right now. I head not there right here. So, so you know, she just had to tell her sister everything. So Joyce is just listening to her sister's story and wants to help in some kind of way. And Joyce was like, hey, why don't you find out who lived here before you moved in? Maybe they will have some information to help. Great idea, right? Which is a lovely idea because why you not call up the people that used to live here before and ask about the house? And sometimes we we'll see some house, nice house, and we're eager for buy it or whatever. We need to ask the background story, like why nobody not live there or just ask. Ask something. 
So I don't know why exactly, but Joyce, Lisa's sister, she was the one who ended up calling the real estate agent and she asked the real estate agent to look up the information as who the previous homeowners for Lisa's house were. Well, 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 well. Joyce was giving some interesting news. So the previous homeowners, well, the previous homeowner, her name was Kelly. And Joyce calls Kelly and she was like, hey, I would like to get together and talk about who lived at the house, if everything was okay, if anything weird was going on, you know, just anything and everything. So she called up Kelly and I say, are you named Kelly? Oh, so you did live in at the house before my sister? No, where did I go on? You realize that no other place did I happen? You know, she just asked her a question and we can meet up for talk about this i just want to know some something about the house so that's what they did so they get together and kelly says that the homeowner before her belonged to a man named james gordy who worked as a real estate investor in a neighbor in nearby columbus georgia but james gordy has passed away in 1974. so joyce hears the name james gordy and she's like mm, me hear the name there already now. I want me hear the name there from. The name there sound familiar, man. So she's trying to put together the pieces and connect the dots in her head. And then she's like, Jesus, save ya. Then I had a new friend named Mr. Gordy. No, the man the idea play up and down with. So she's not realizing that Heidi was playing with a dead man, basically. So Joyce goes back to Lisa and she said, get this, you'll never believe what happened. Say no. She goes to her sister and she says, sister girl, sit down right here. So you need to hear this. Me alone can't hear this. You need to hear this right now. So she did the most of her sister. She said, come sit down now. Come sit down. If you ever know what fly over your head, if you ever know what go on in your house, say the low what you do and come sit down right here so let me talk to you. So she's like, I talked to the previous homeowner and she told me about a man who used to live here named Mr. James Gordy, but he died in 1974. So she's like, Lisa, you said my meet up Kelly. Kelly tell me so a man used to live here, him named James Gordy, but guess what, him dead. So there and then it a clicking at the two of them minds say, the imaginary friend we I did have is a ghost. So Lisa at this point want to piss up herself, right? Now Lisa thinks it would be good to tell Heidi that her friend, Mr. Gordy, is dead. Which I don't know how we are going to tell a three-year-old that. But that's what she did. And after telling Heidi this, the first thing she asked her mom was if she could visit the grave where Mr. Gordy was buried. And that was the first thing that came out of her mouth, which is shocking and weird because Heidi was three years old. How did she even know where he was buried? So Lisa, the mommy, looks up where Mr. Gardiff was buried and agreed to take Heidi to the graveyard. So you know the car drive, and when they pull up at the graveyard, Heidi busts out of the car and run go straight to Mr. Gardiff's tombstone. Red flag again. Heidi was only three years old. She a baby. She can't read yet. So there's no way she can find out like the tombstone is saying James Gardy, whatever. She just run go to it, right? So Lisa see this and Lisa get afraid. Lisa get confused. Lisa just in a bad place right now. So Lisa was just going through it. Poor Lisa. Scared confused you know so lisa decides to reach out to the previous homeowner herself so she calls up kelly and kelly ends up coming over to the family house with some photos so kelly sits down with lisa and heidi to share to show her some of the family photos she brought the main reason was to see if maybe heidi could recognize anyone in the photos so she hands her the stack of photos right well not a stack couple photos and that's when Heidi was able to point out a man she points directly to a man in one of the photos and say oh that's con yeah must see already that's con and Kelly looks at her and say oh no that's Lon so you know Heidi's only three years old babies so I guess she misunderstood his name his name is Lon but Heidi calls him con again she was a baby so 
who is this Lan guy? Well, Lan was Kelly. Kelly, the previous homeowner, it was her uncle. He actually had lost his hand in a cotton gin accident, which would explain why the man that Heidi saw at the door was all bloody and had an injured hand. The cotton gin was extremely dangerous. It was an extremely dangerous workplace and people were just getting hurt on the job quite often, losing limb after limb after limb. But Lon, he also had passed away from cancer in 1957. So we understand, say, Heidi, a be a doppy Heidi, I see. First, Mr. Gordy, was she a par with, is a doppy. Then, remember when the door ring and the man, the day outside the blood up man, is also a ghost. So after all of this, Andy and Lisa, the mommy and daddy, are just little freaked out like them a wonder, Jesus, Savior. A be a doppy a link with you now, you know. A be a doppy a come over our yard now, you know. We need to buy a bottle of olive oil. We need to get a pasta for pure, pure, pure the house and all of that. So, them just a free coat, you know. So, they're trying to come up with ideas on what to do. And they're thinking, hey, maybe we can distract idea or something with a dog. No, they're thinking maybe if they get her a dog, it will distract her, you know, keep her busy or something so she can move on and just forget all of this. Well, nope, no, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. They surprised Heidi with her dog and Heidi was happy because doggies make everyone happy unless you're allergic or something. But, you know, besides the point, that's okay. So, however, so, however, the dog wouldn't last in the home long. So, during the evenings or any random time throughout the day, the dog would stare off into the corners or always and just start barking, growling. All of his ears would be standing up and he would just be frozen, growling at something. The dog would often do this and this made Lisa very uncomfortable because the dog was literally growling at nothing, you know? There was nothing in the hallway and all the ears on her arm would stand up straight but it was silly because it was nothing, right? And everything was okay. That's what she thought. Now sadly, not long after, the dog ended up running away. The dog has said, Ewa, I nah do this no more. I nah stay in the house so no more. If you don't want to stay in there, me, me pack up my things and my coat. So the dog run away. Nobody not hear nothing from the dog. After that, the dog just left. Now, as time went on, Addy was no longer the only one experiencing weird things happening in the house. So, remember when I just started out the story? Addy alone as a ghost at the door. Addy alone of imaginary friend. That I got change. Everybody got get a piece of the cake now. But this is where I stop for today. And this is part one. So, if you want to hear... Part 2, I know what's going to happen next. Turn on the post notification bell to be notified when I upload again. Again, thank you guys for hanging out with me today. Remember, comment down below so I can hear on the thoughts, okay? Thank you guys. Mwah.